funding for Avery Talks About Stuff was made possible in part by the YouTube AdSense program and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, otherwise strange content. Today, I have a bit of a migraine, so let's hope nothing crazy happens. <laughs> so today I want to talk about a show that I've wanted to talk about pretty much since the beginning of my channel, and I really have no idea why I haven't yet, although I did find out today that this show is considered partially lost media because there's only a couple episodes that you can find out there, and the episode that I'm um, working off of today is not the best quality, but it's literally like one of the only ones, if not the only one, I can find, so it's good enough that you can get the gist, and we're gonna work with that. <laughs> You guys might remember way, way, way back at the very beginning of my channel. Oh, don't mind this, by the way. It's not a bruise or anything. I, I was at a indie film thing here in Atlanta last night. Shout out, kick the ladder. But the first video that I ever did on this channel was a video about 2010s, late 2000s, uh, popular reality show scare tactics. That was a hidden camera show where they scared the living shit out of people to varying degrees of good-natured. <laughs> but there's another show that I remember distinctly watching in like early high school that I was obsessed with as a goth that didn't know she was a little goth in the making. That was Hellevator. The show was hosted by goth legends to twins Jen and Sylvia Soska. I actually don't know much else about them other than I knew them from this show, but I remember wanting to be them when I grew up. It was also made, and I did not know this until I started work on this video, but it was made in collaboration with Blumhouse, uh, you know, the studio that makes all of those slasher films that we all grew up on and watched at way too young of an age. The Soska twins are also horror film directors, I believe, and basically all of these horror enthusiasts came together to make this game show where contestants basically had to make it through the most intense haunted house that you have ever seen. And I remember it being fucking brutal. I haven't seen this since high school. We're gonna see if it's as crazy as I remember it today. The thing that I like about it in retrospect was unlike something like Scare Tactics where somebody was completely unaware and, you know, sometimes being put in very scary situations that they genuinely thought were real. This is a situation where people go in fully knowing that it's a game, but, you know, they still end up getting scared because the ambiance is just so horrifying. But anyway, let's just watch it. Let's just see how we think it holds up. And if you have never seen this before, um, trigger warning now, there is a lot of fake blood and like gory, gruesome, basically anything slasher adjacent that GSN could get away with back in the 2010s. So they start off bringing them all into this big warehouse that they called the slaughterhouse. Here are our girls. Are you ready to serve up something truly evil? Definitely. They basically sit in this control room and just fuck with the contestants over a microphone. And I remember there were several times in the show where the contestants didn't seem to be aware that there were two hosts because they're twins and they sound similar when they speak, so it was almost like at times they couldn't tell that it wasn't just one lady, uh, which I always found interesting. I want to beat the elevator and rub it in the twisted sister's faces. My biggest fear is snakes. Do you see how excited they looked? They were like, is that a challenge? My name is Angela. I am 36 years old. And I am a shot. Yeah, so basically our team for this week is a group of chefs that all work together uh, and they're competing together as a team. This was a team-based game. My name is Gabe. My biggest weakness is that I'm a big pansy and I am get scared of everything. Oh, I believe in you. You can do I it. I get scared of that everything too, but I love horror. Are you ready to scare some chefs? That sounds delicious. They also have like Jonathan Frank's oh level puns, if I remember correctly. Oh what the f***? My name's on the menu. All right, so they see themselves on the menu. And then, oh God, I forgot that they just jump scare them like that. Holy shit. Good evening, everyone. Oh, they do see them. 
This was season two. It looks like it came out in 2016 originally. This must have been after they changed the format for after a little while, because I know they used to not be able to see them. They must have decided that this was where we should see them, which I think was a good move. Tonight, you will compete in horrifying challenges based on the seven deadly sins. Greed, sloth, wrath, envy, lust, pride, and something chef like you have helped cause the world over. Gluttony. So tonight's Rap challenges are pride. based and on something the seven like deadly sins. The, world over. the challenges increase in difficulty and together could earn you up to $10,000. Christ, $10,000 feels oh God, low. Hell no, hell no, hell no. There they no are, here. it's the girls. Oh Come with us. They shuttle them into the elevator. I love, and they play their part okay, so okay. well. Oh my god, Dory. Jesus. Your head. Get in the elevator. She's bad looking. She's evil. She's evil. You're scared of just them? I think they're the moment in this shot. But anyway. She's evil. They're all evil. Evil, be gone. <laughs> They seem to take that as a compliment that she's scared of them, though. Poor Dory, crying in the inferno cell. Oh my god, there's oh. Dory. Alright, so one of their teammates is locked in a fiery inferno with actual snakes. Um, and they've gotta go rescue her. That. Oh, oh my- Yeah, this poor lady, I would be doing the same thing. I hate snakes. Dory, don't get hissed. Oh, you think that's funny? I do. <laughs> and I would be plotting revenge on the Twisted Sisters at this point. Earl Pickett was a pig farmer. After years of marriage, Earl's wife threatened to leave him for greener pastures. Filled with wrath, he hacked her to death with a meat cleaver. All right, we have backstory to the haunted house. What is a haunted house without a good backstory? He then ground her to sausage, fried it up with some eggs, and served a breakfast. Charming. We're going a little Sweeney Todd with this one. I did warn you. Dining on the feast as he sat across from her headless corpse. But ha no, um, no, I don't want to. I don't want to think down the the thought train of cannibalism. I'm just gonna keep going. Cannibalism can remain a mystery for today. And who said romance was dead? Mrs. Pickett, I suppose. Well, no, 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 Mrs. Pickett is dead. Meet your maker. Who knows about Roman? Which of you is Do you even know what wrath is? Okay, but I know what meat is, and I love me some meat. Baby, I love me some meat, too. Go to horny jail. Human meat. Go to cannibal jail. <laughs> Alright, so Gabe what? takes a walkie, and he's the only one that they're sending out. They send out one person each level. Uh, and if he fails, he's just out, and the other two have to go it alone without him. Uh, so he walks out, and uh, you guys know I'm terrified of, like, dark spaces. It's a huge, huge fear of mine. And just the way that they make them walk out into this, like, oh, pitch black oh, darkness oh, was always so oh, shady oh, to me. Not, pun not intended, but there you go. Follow the light. Oh, I'm getting anxious for it. I don't want to go. I love horror, but I am so easily startled like especially by loud noises and things i'm very emotional surprising to no one if i had to actually do competitive challenges in a haunted house like this i think i'd die holy <laughs> i don't want to eat meat anymore i wonder if the vegan teacher would like this show because it's turning people off of meat because they're grossed out by it now i just got a little nauseous thinking about it or if she'd be upset because they're like joking about it i don't know <laughs> We have eyes everywhere. To be clear, the meat in question is supposed to be human, but obviously no humans were harmed in the making of the show. I'm coming. Oh, okay. I'm coming. Keep going, keep going. You're good, you're good. So they're helping him navigate. <laughs> He's not bothering anybody. Gabe, you are in Earl's kitchen where the sin of wrath overtook him. His challenge is he has three minutes in this blood-soaked kitchen where, in the story, remember, a man has chopped his wife into pieces. I didn't hear what they said, but they have to find body parts, and they have three minutes to do it, or they lose. They have three minutes to find the pieces, put them back on her, and then get back into the elevator. Your nightmare starts now. I'm rooting for you, man. <laughs> Oh, 
I like mice and rats. I don't find them creepy. I know some people do. Valid, but you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh my god, my heart. Oh my god, I feel so bad. Like, obviously, this is a situation where, like, everybody is in on it and signed up and knows that it's all fake, but, oh, I, f I just feel bad. Check on the doors, hurry, check, check. Don't stress him out, it's gonna make it worse. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, the butcher got him. Now let's continue our tale. Oh god, now we t we continue with- I forgot about how awfully, like, horrifying the, the backstory is. It sparked in him an insatiable hunger for human flesh. Oh. So now, our butcher, having murdered and eaten his wife, has decided that he likes being a cannibal. How did I get here? To satisfy his gluttony, he began murdering unsuspecting victims. So he became a serial killer who would feed people to his pigs and then also eat some of the people. I don't know. Well, leave me alone. God, that moment of just your friend closing the door on you has to suck. And then having to stand in the elevator alone also has to suck. Oh my god, she got kidnapped. I don't care for that. Am I pretty? To keep his victims from being fed to the pigs, you must pull seven organs out of the pig troughs and then toss them into a waste cart using only your mouth. All right, so she's got to pull seven body parts out of one bucket and toss them into another bucket with her mouth only. <laughs> Got one. Come on, girl, you got it. Yeah, wanna... she's got three already. Oh, did did they say they're four heads? Okay. You've got another one. You can do it, you can do it. Go, 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 go. But you still need to make it back to the elevator. Come on, come on, come on. You're okay. You smell terrible. Oh, I bet she does, poor thing. I hate to admit it, but you are a cut above the rest. Organs. They were organs. Oh, organs is so much worse. <laughs> oh, God. When it rains, it pours. Oh. All right, so now the story continues, our butcher now decides that he is gonna dabble in the worst sin of all, capitalism. He opened a roadside barbecue stand where he sold his special smoked sausages. He's gonna go full Sweeney Todd and sell these body parts as sausages to unsuspecting clientele. And people lined up for miles. Anybody want a hot dog? And Robert, if you make it back, you'll earn $5,000 and a chance at the Inferno run to save Dory and Gabe. Get a chance. Sick to his stomach. Okay, you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you. He just kept going. He was just like, fuck all. Yep. That was just the epitome of like, everything's fine energy. There's something behind you. Okay, so my... Audio is completely unsalvageable at this particular point, but I just wanted to say real quick, I wonder who played the butcher. I hope he had fun. Also, are those red eyes put in in posts? Because maybe it's just a trick of the light, the way that the light is reacting with the camera, but I, I don't know, I had to keep look at it a couple of times. Oh no, those are legs! <laughs> Inside the freezer are body parts and other ingredients in Earl's sausage. You need to find the seven correct ingredients, put them in the meat grinder, and grind out a sausage that is long enough to reach the end of the cutting board. Okay, so he's gotta do some cooking. Where's the recipe? You need the recipe. Good thing we deliver. <laughs> is that a big Z? Oh no. Angela, help him out. That woman has been through enough. She has the recipe, so she starts reading it off to him. Okay, what's the first ingredient? 
through pig ears. It's not my thing, but like, you know, where I come from, people eat pig ears, so. Pig ears, maybe, but like, that's, that's where the line is. I feel like the human heart crosses that line. Human finger, a human heart, and a human tongue. Mm-mm, that's some good eats. Incorrect. <laughs> Can you not jump scare this guy for like two seconds? He is clearly going through something. He found the heart! Five, four, three, okay, one. Oh, this she's all alone! It's this challenge was a recipe for disaster. It certainly was. Good job. I can hear them high five, and that bothers me just from a s technical sound engineering standpoint. But anyway, Robert is now condemned to the inferno cell with Dory and Gabe, where they'll be feeling the heat unless you can rescue them all by yourself. Oh, come, come on, there. Queen, you can do oh. it. When you sign up for this, there's got to be a thought process going on of like, well, it's teams, like, we'll do it together, but like, you probably don't anticipate being alone, you know? The aloneness in this situation has got to suck. Hey! Oh my god! Are you okay? Girl, you gotta save us. In the I guess she isn't that alone, doors. but she's alone in, like, what she has to do. Angela, you've reached the inferno. Look at them girls. Yeah. Okay, so you've basically got to find the key and then, you know, play the, play the clock out, I guess you could say. If you find the key, you will have to decide whether to keep playing and bank more money or release your friends. <laughs> what else does pride like a plastic surgeon's operating room? All right, so pride is represented by a plastic surgeon's office? We really, like, you know, I get it, but like, why? I don't know, maybe I'm being a little too sensitive, but like, maybe, you know, it's good that we don't, uh, stigmatize, you know, cosmetic surgery as much anymore. Anyway, sorry, just going on. I get, I get what they were going for. <laughs> Not to be a party pooper. <laughs> God. Mm, mm -mm. Nope. 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 No. Hell no. <laughs> Please tell me that's just water. Put it on the floor. Put it on the floor. She probably didn't even have to put her mouth on that thing. Poor thing. Prepare yourself for the lair of the lusty corpse bride. Gotta put a ring on the corpse bride's finger. <laughs> Don't drop it! Good on that actress for just being still for that long. Did she just tell a dead body to calm down? That is so funny to me. You defeated Lust for $7,000, but still no key to save your friends. I have the worst luck with this kind of thing. I would pick, whatever I pick last would be where the key would be. You are headed towards the embalming room of the laziest mortician ever. There's a lot of bad news for Angela. The pipes, the body coming back to life in the corner. I didn't even notice the body coming back to life. I was just thinking about how this looks very much like a challenge they'd give you in a Nancy Drew game. Yeah, except there's never been a dead body writhing on the floor in Nancy Drew, to my knowledge. Oh my god, I got the key! Oh my god, I got the key! Run, run! <laughs> they made it! Angela, somehow you and you alone conquered five of the seven deadly sins, saved your friends, and now your team is leaving here with $21,000. Violet, you're turning violet! Okay, my fight or flight is kicked in. That was Hellevator. It is indeed as intense, if not more, than I remembered. Uh, and yeah, that's a fun little game show from my childhood. So, that one was a lot. The set pieces and things like that were really well constructed, though. In it was too well constructed. <laughs> Whatever writer came up with that butcher backstory, I don't... I don't trust him. <laughs> But anyway, uh, thank you for being here. I know, I know we've been covering reality TV and things that are strike safe for months now. And now the strike is technically over. So, you know, we are going to get back to some of the more longstanding series that we've been covering. But I wanted to cover this because I've been planning on doing it for forever. This was like the last thing that I was like, I'm going to cover this before the strike is over. And then the strike 
ended. No complaints there. But I didn't want to put this one on the back burner for another three and a half years, you know? So here we are. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around. I post nonsense all the time. If you'd like to enable my nonsense, maybe consider becoming a member. You get extra perks. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye! I'm gonna go take a hydroxyzine now.